Tonight's topic is called the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. That's tonight's topic. The law is spiritual. We're gonna open up with the book of Romans, chapter seven. Romans chapter seven and verse fourteen. Okay, read that. Romans seven verse fourteen. Romans chapter seven verse fourteen. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold on the sin. So the Apostle Paul is saying we know, because this was known in Israel. So the Apostle Paul had to remind our forefathers, because during this time, there was a lot of confusion in the church. So now the Apostle Paul is bringing them to their remembrance that the law is spiritual. Why? Give me the book of First Peter, First Peter chapter 1. Let's start at verse 10. First Peter 1 verse 10. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. The grace that should come unto us is talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the grace that would come unto us. Read. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which is in them, did signify. Which was in them. The Spirit of Christ, which was in them. Read that part again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Mm -hmm. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So now the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Christ was in the prophet. The Spirit of Christ has always been in the prophet. So go back to Romans 7, verse 14 again. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. Come on. But I am carnal, sold under sin. So the law is spiritual because the spirit of Christ was in all the prophets. And guess what? The spirit of Christ is in this whole Bible. Give me that in uh, Psalms chapter 40 and verse 30. Psalms 40, verse 30. The law is spiritual. That spirit is the spirit of Christ because Christ is the, was the law. You understand? Christ is the law. He is the truth. He is the, the way, the truth, the way, and the life. He is the law. Okay? The spirit of Christ, that's what he's talking about when he says, for well, we know that the law is spiritual because of what? The spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is in the law and in the prophets. Okay? Read that. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Come on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Come on. It is written. I come in the volume of the book. Uh -huh. It is written of me. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So the whole Bible is written of Christ. He comes in the volume of the book. The law, the prophets, the New Testament, the whole Bible. So go back to Romans chapter 7 verse 14 again. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual, mm -hmm. but I am carnal, sold under sin. We know that the law is spiritual because the spirit of Christ is what in this Bible. The spirit of Christ is in the law. The law was a shadow of good things to come, which is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ has always been throughout the whole Bible. You understand? So the law of sacrifice was a shadow of good things to come, meaning what? Christ. So we can have an, a spiritual understanding of what the law actually means. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 10. Okay? Hebrews 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. Uh -huh. And not the very image of the things. Come on. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So now it says the law. The law of sacrifice was a shadow of good things to come. The law of sacrifice was the shadow of Christ. Okay. The law is spiritual. The spirit of Christ was is always been in the law. Okay. So Christ, the law of sacrifice was the shadow of things to come. Hebrews 9 verse 11. Get that? 
Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Come on. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come. You see that thing? So Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. So Christ was what? Was the shadow of good things to come. Okay, read that part again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come. Read. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, mm -hmm. not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Not of this building. So what is he talking about? He's talking about, because the, the temple was still standing. Okay. The temple was still standing. The temple was destroyed. The, te the temple was, was wiped out during what? During the time of 70 AD. You understand? The te at this point where the Apostle Paul was talking, the temple was still standing. It was only in 70 AD when Titus, Titus and his son Vespasian destroyed the temple in 70 AD. Okay, read that again, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. But Christ, being, being come and high priest of good things to come, come on, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Not of this building, meaning what? The temple that was still standing, you are saying, not of this building. But guess what? Of a more a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. You see, because, they, because Christ, guess what Christ did? Christ went up, he went back to the Father, and he came back. That's why when he was resurrected, he said, no, don't touch me. He needed to go up. He needed to go up to get some things and come back. Okay? Read it again. Verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Read. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So now go back to Hebrews 10, verse 1. Hebrews 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So now Christ was the shadow of the good things to come, which is what? The spiritual understanding of the spirit, because our forefathers then didn't enter into the conscience, the spirit, the spirit that was working behind the law. They didn't get it. They did not understand. That's why when Christ came, he was he brought the understanding unto us. He, he, he unlocked the seal so we can be able to understand the spirit behind the law. That's why the Apostle Paul, if you come back to us, go back to Romans 7 verse 14, that the law is spiritual. Go back there. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. Come on. But I am carnal, sold under sin. You say, so the law is spiritual. Watch this. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus Come on. hath made me free from the law of sin and death. You see that thing? When, you see when it says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Meaning what? Christ comes with law. And Christ, Christ said, I come in the volume of the book. So Christ, you cannot separate Christ from the law. You understand? You can't separate Christ from the law. So it says, for the law of the spirit of life. So Christ came with the law of the spirit of life. So that's why the Apostle Paul was saying, the law is spiritual. Because when you keep the law, there's a spirit, there's a spirit that goes in keeping the commandments. Every high holiday we keep, every law that you have to observe, every sin that you have to repent from, there's a spirit that comes with that. That's the fruit, the fruits of the spirit when you apply the law. Our forefathers didn't get that. That's why Christ had to come and teach us again. You understand? And he taught the 12 so the 12 can teach everyone else. Okay, read that again, verse 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that made me free from the law of sin and death. That made me free from the law of sin and death. Watch this. Give me that in John chapter 5. John 5 verse 46. The book of John chapter 5 verse 46. Mm -hmm. 
For had he believed Moses, he would have believed me, for he wrote of me. He did what? For he wrote of me. Because Moses wrote of Christ. Moses wrote of Christ. Why? How did he write, how did he write of Christ? Because Christ said, go back to Psalms 40 verse 7 again. So we don't lose the thought. Okay. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Come on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Mm -hmm. It is written of me. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So go back to where he was at. John chapter 5 verse 46. John chapter 5 verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So now he wrote of Christ. So we're going to deal with some things this day, okay? Because Moses wrote of Christ. All the, all the prophets that came, they were what? They were all moving in the spirit of Christ. And the things that they said, the things that they wrote of concerning Christ, which was everything, guess what? But when you read the old and you read the new, our people don't know how to connect the two because they think they are separate. No, it's all it's one and the same. You understand? It's one and the same thing, you know? But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? The reason why our people cannot believe on Christ is because they don't believe the things that they written in the law and the things that the prophet has spoken. That's why it's difficult for them to believe the things that Christ spoke. Because they don't, they, they don't what they don't believe. They disregard the law. They disregard, they disregard what the prophets have said. And what we read in First Peter one eleven is the spirit of Christ, which was in the prophets. So when they don't believe what's written in the law and what the prophets have said, they will not be able to understand Christ. It's impossible. Okay, they will, they will not, they're not going to be able to get. It. Read that part again, verse forty seven. John chapter five is forty seven. Mm -hmm. But if ye believe not his right, how shall ye believe my words? They won't be able to believe the words that Christ spoke unto us. Watch this. Give me First Corinthians chapter 4. No, no, Second Corinthians, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, let's confuse those two. Oh, no. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter 4 and the 3. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You see that thing? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Like, our, like our, we always bring out the true gospel of Christ is hidden from our people. You understand? Because our people are lost. Watch this. Give me Psalm 66. I want to show you something. Because David talked about this thing. Give me Psalm 66 verse 8. Psalm chapter 56, verse 8. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? The bottle is the book. The bottle is the Bible. Okay, the bottle is the Bible. It says, thou tellest my wanderings. Because our people are lost, wandering around from place to place, from mountain to hill, looking for, searching for identity. But the last, the, the one place that they don't want to in, investigate in the Bible. So they are lost. They are wondering. Even that in Proverbs 21 verse 16, our people are wondering. So the Lord says, thou tell us my wondering, because our wondering is written in the Bible. We are wandering from mountain to hill, Christianity, Islam, you understand, Jehovah's Witness, Catholic, Lutheran, Dutch, whatever, whatever. Okay, Proverbs 21 verse 16. Proverbs 21 verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the day. You see that thing? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the day. Right now, our people, they are the congregation of the day. Christianity is a congregation of the day. Islam, congregation of the day. Politics, congregation of the day. Democracy, same thing, congregation of the day. Because they don't teach our people who they are. There is no spirit of Christ working in there. It's the spirit of Satan. That's why our people are here. Our people are lost because the true gospel of Christ, which is that light that's supposed to shine in, their, in that dark place, which is their mind, nobody's teaching them. Okay? Nobody's teaching the people the real reason why the conditions are 
we are in the conditions that we are in. Okay. Go back to Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three again. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three. Pray. And if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Next verse. Come on. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now watch this. You see that part when it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The reason why our people don't know the truth, it is because of what? It is because they don't believe. Our people don't believe. That's why they don't know the truth. Because if they believed on Christ, they were going to know the truth, what the truth really is. But because our people don't believe on Christ, they don't know the truth. You see, that, that's the key. Because they don't believe on Christ, they don't know the truth. Read that again, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, mm -hmm. lest the light of the of the glory of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see that thing? The laws of God must be shined unto them. They are not good. The laws of God are not going to be shined unto them while they are still in politics, while they are still in democracy and Christianity and Islam and whatever philosophy they are in. The laws of God is not going to be taught to them. That's the point. Okay, watch this. Give me, go back to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 and verse, I mean Romans chapter 7 verse 14 again. Romans 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul and the sin. The law is spiritual. So spiritual things, because, because the law is spiritual, you need to be able to understand, to keep the law, apply the law, so you can understand spiritual things that come with keeping the law. That's what the law, that's what Christ is really teaching us. When you apply the law, watch this. Give me that in Psalms 119. Mm. Psalms. Okay, Psalms chapter 119 and verse 18. Psalms 119 verse 18. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see that part right there? Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold, that I may see or perceive wondrous things out of thy law. Because the wondrous things are found in God's law. Those wondrous things, those are spiritual things, because the law is spiritual. That's the truth. When you keep God's commandments, you're going to get the spirit, the fruit, which is the spirit. That spirit that you're going to get, that's the fruit. Do you understand? Watch this. Give me a second, Ezra 931. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 31. Mm -hmm. For behold, I sow my law in you. Come on. And it shall bring fruit in you. Mm -hmm. And he shall be honored in it forever. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, I saw my law in you. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The wondrous things out of God's law is what it, it, it says, and it shall bring forth, it shall bring fruit in you. That's the understanding. That's the spiritual understanding to connect the Bible. Okay? And ye shall be honored in it forever when you apply. Because the law is the key to unlocking the spirit of Christ. When you keep God's commandments, you're going to be able to unlock the spirit of Christ. That spirit of Christ is what's going to give you understanding when you study the scripture. It's going to strengthen your memory. It's going to help you to apply, to, to take accountability for your actions, to take responsibility for the things that you do. You see that thing? Read that part again, verse 31. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 31. For, you, for behold, I saw my law in you. Mm -hmm. and it shall bring fruit in you and ye shall be honored in it forever you shall be honored in it forever watch this give me the book of Matthew chapter 13 okay Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 no 52 Matthew 13 verse 52 
Let me write that down. Mm. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Come on. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Read that part again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. You see what you see that part when it says every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, which is instructed. All this Romans 2, verse 18, Romans 2. Every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Romans 2, verse 18. Romans chapter 2, verse 18. Come on. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, mm -hmm. being instructed out of the law. Being what? Being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the law. When you, when you are instructed out of God's laws, you know the will of the Father. But the key is that you must be instructed out of God's law. So the scribe, go back to Matthew, chapter 13, verse 52 again. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So now, the scribe that is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, he is instructed out of the law. He is not instructed out of the doctrine of Christianity. He is not instructed out of uh, politics. No. He says he, he is instructed out of the laws of God. Because when you are instructed out of the laws of God, you can understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You can understand those mysteries. Watch this. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 13. Okay. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 13 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? In parables. In parables, allegory, or proverb. Come on. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Come on. But unto them it is not given. You see that thing? It is given to is given and it says because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Those that are given the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, they are instructed out of God's law. If you're not instructed out of God's law, you're not going to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Impossible. That's not going to happen. Go back to Matthew 13 now, verse 52 again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Wait. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, mm -hmm. which bringeth forth out of, out of his treasure things new and old. Out of his treasure things new and old. The new is talking about the new covenant, the new testament. The old is talking about the old covenant, the old testament. He says, you're going to bring forth out of your treasure things new and old. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Read that. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of out the of, heart. Out of the what? Out of the good treasure of the heart. The good treasure. So that treasure is the money. The good treasure. It's not just any treasure. A good treasure. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart, of the mind. So when it says, um, his, which, which bringeth forth out of his treasure, things new and old, the treasure is your mind. Okay? Read that part again, verse 35. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. He does what? Bringeth forth good things. You're going to bring forth good things, which is what? The wondrous things out of the Lord. That's the good things you want to bring. The wondrous things out of the law because it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Right? And an evil man 
out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And an evil man, an evil man out of the evil treasure, in the, out of his corrupted mind, is going to bring forth evil things, perverse things, carnal things. You understand? Things that are contrary to the laws of God. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Leviticus, okay? Because some of you are reading your four chapters. Okay, some of you have told, I've told you already, uh, you must ask questions, not consistent at all. Okay, but I'm not here to bury anyone. Okay, uh, Leviticus chapter 6, let's start there. Leviticus 6 and 1. Watch this. Leviticus 6, I need you to pay close attention. Okay, because a lot of you, when you study, you just read, you just, just, you just be skimming through the chapter. You don't really understand the importance of knowing what the scriptures is saying. You don't make notes as you study. You don't summarize the chapters that you read. You don't do none of that. You don't take this seriously as you should. Okay? But when it comes to issue of things, you are number one. Okay? Read that now. Leviticus 6, verse 1. Let's start there. Leviticus 6, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Wait. If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, Mm -hmm. and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep. Watch this. Or in fellowship. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm -hmm. Read the two again. Read the two again. Read the two one more. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 2. If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep mm -hmm. or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or has deceived his neighbor. So now this goes into, this is the civil law right here. This is the civil law. You trespass against the law by lying against your neighbor, your brother or your sister, okay? It says, he's giving an example, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered unto him to keep, okay? You are given something to hold in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence, You've taken, you've taken something from your brother, your sister by violence, or has deceived his neighbor. Read on. Or have found that which was lost. Or we found that which was lost. That which of your neighbor, this which was lost. You found it. Read. And lied concerning it. You lied. That, no, I didn't find it. You know you found it, but you lied that you did not find it. Read. And swear it falsely. And does In what? any of all and swear it falsely. And swear it falsely, you lie, then no, I didn't see it. Read on. In any of all these that a man doeth, sinneth therein. Because you are in the midst of sin. Because guess what? You don't, you don't, you're not dealing with your neighbor according to the scriptures. You're not applying the same law to your brother or your sister. Read. Then it shall be, because he hath sinned and is guilty, and is what? That he shall, and is guilty. Because you have sinned, because you've broken the law, and you have you and you are guilty of that law, read eh? that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he had deceitfully got, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found. You must what? You must restore that which you took from your brother, you must restore it back to him. You understand? That's how it was done. Read on. Or all that about which he had sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle. He shall what? And shall, he shall even restore it in the principle. You shall restore that which you've taken violently from your neighbor. You must restore it in the principle. If it costs a thousand bucks, you must give him a thousand bucks. Go ahead. And shall add the fifth pot more thereto. You see that thing? You must multiply that thousand by five. So it will be 5,000. Read. And give it unto him to whom it appertaineth. Because it belongs to him. Read on. In the day of, tres in the day of his trespass offering. In the day of his trespass offering. Next, next verse. Read on. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. A ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. So now this goes into willful sin. This is willful sin. Okay, read that, read that again, verse 6. Read that 6 again. Leviticus of the 6, verse 6. 
and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. So the, 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 the offering that you were, you had to bring was a ram without blemish out of the flock, and you must bring it to the Levites, and they will perform the sacrifices. But the key is, watch this. Before we dig, dig into verse 6, give me Exodus 22 verse 1. Exodus chapter 22, verse 1. Come on. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. You see that part? It says, if a man shall steal an ox. So if you stole an ox, an ox, because guess what? We used to have livestock back then, not like today. But if you're, if you're, if you're one ox, if you have many oxes, oxen but one of it is stolen the one that is stolen that ox must restore unto you five oxen for that ox if he so if he steals the sheep they must bring four 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 sheep for one you see that and four sheep for a sheep that was the penalty so that you don't do it again okay go back to Leviticus 6 now that's 6 now Leviticus of the Chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. Wait. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for any for anything of all that he hath done in trespassing the rich. Now read the 6 and 7 together. You know what? Before you get me, hold on, hold on. One second. Verse 6 and 7 together. Leviticus should be 6 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto he, the Lord. His what? His trespass offering. He shall bring his trespass offering. He will bring his trespass offering. Go ahead. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, mm -hmm. a ram without blemish a, out of a, the flock. A what? A ram without blemish. A ram without blemish. A ram without, without blemish. Go ahead. A ram without blemish out of the flock. Mm -hmm. With thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. Really? And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. The priest shall what? And, shall, and the priest shall make an atonement for him unto, before the Lord. So now once he brings that trespass offering, a ram without blemish, okay, it says the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. Go ahead. And it shall be forgiven him mm -hmm. for anything of all that he has done in trespassing therein. Watch this. Give, go back to Romans now. Romans 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is what? The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Go back to Leviticus now chapter 6 verse 7. Again. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 7. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. And it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he has done in trespassing therein. So now he brings an offering. He offers a ram without blemish. And an atonement would be made for him so his sins may be forgiven. Watch this. Give me the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Romans 5 verse 10. Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Mm-hmm. For if, when we were enemies... When we were what? When we were enemies... Remember, the book of Romans is written to the children of Israel scattered in Rome. Okay, give me that in Romans 2 verse 17. Romans 2 verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Thou art what? Thou art called a Jew. So the apostle Paul was writing to the Jews scattered in Rome. Come on. Behold, thou art called the Jew, and restest in the law. Because the law was and given to us. You restest in the law. Right? 
and makest thy boast of God. And makest thy boast of God, because we boast that the most high God is the God of Israel. Go back now, Romans 5, verse 10 again. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. That's the subject matter. The Jews gathered in Rome. Come on. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, mm -hmm. much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see that thing? It says, for if, when we were enemies, because we became an enemy to the Most High. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the children of Israel scattered in Rome, saying, you were, we, we, were, we were enemies to the Most High God. Give me Lamentations chapter 2. Lamentations 2 verse 1. We're going to read down. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger mm -hmm. and cast down from heaven unto the earth the Come beauty on. of Israel and, re and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. So now the most High God cast us from heaven out of rulership into the earth. He put us in slavery because just time, who put us in slavery at this time? Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon. We went into slavery under the Babylonian. Okay, read that again, this one. Lamentations 2 verse 1. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel Ready? and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Jump down to verse 4 now. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 4. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. Like in what? Like an enemy. Because the Most High was mad with us. He was mad at hell. Because of what? We broke the commandments. And he kept sending the prophets to warn the people. We did not listen to the prophets. And so when the Most High was hard for he sent Nebuchadnezzar against us. You see that thing? So read that part again, verse 4. Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 4. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. So he bent his bow like an enemy. Who was the bow that he bent as an enemy? Nebuchadnezzar. He, the bow was Nebuchadnezzar. The enemy was us. Right? He stood with his right hand as an adversary. You see that thing? As an adversary, as an enemy against us. Wait. Right? And slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. Wait. Right? He poured out his fury like fire. He poured out his fury like fire because the Babylonians, they bent the temple down to the ground. Wait. Right? The Lord was an enemy. Mm -hmm. the Lord, hold on. The Lord was an what? The Lord was an enemy. The most high God was an our was our enemy. He was turned into our enemy. He was our adversary because of what? We broke his commandments. Guess what? Because the curses keep reoccurring, today the most high God, when we went into slavery, we was colonized, apartheid happened, the Lord was our enemy because we broke his commandments. That's why. Read that again, verse 5. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 5. The Lord was an enemy. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all her palaces. Mm -hmm. He had destroyed his stronghold. He destroyed the had... strong, he destroyed our the stronghold because guess what? The temple was standing. We had our kings and all of that, but we were wicked as hell. Right? And had increased in the daughter of Judah. Mourning and lamentation. Mourning and lamentation. Give me Jeremiah 14, verse 2. He increased in, June, in Judah, mourning and lamentation. You understand? Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth. Judah what? Judah mourneth. Judah mourneth. That's why he increased in Judah, mourning and lamentation. Because what did the Lord do? He sent Nebuchadnezzar against us, the ancient Kushites, like the, the Nilotic Kushites. Okay, come on. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof lay. Because the leadership, what happened? There was no leader. Because during that time, the kings that were supposed to uphold the law, they did not. So guess what? That's why it says the gates thereof languish. Right? They are black unto the ground. Come on. And the crowd of Jerusalem has gone up. The cry of Jerusalem has gone up. Next verse. And their nobles they are have what? sent their little 
and their nobles. Their nobles, their leaders, the gates, that language in verse 2. Come on. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. Really? They came to the pits. They came to the pits. Found, they, they, hold on. They came to the pits. Read on. They came to the pits uh -huh. and found no water. And found no water. Because remember what they did. They blocked all fall food coming in and out of the city. They blocked the water as well. There was a siege. There was, they put it, there was a three-year siege in Jerusalem. That's what Nebuchadnezzar and them did. You understand? So the people who were stuck, we started to eat our own children. That's how bad it was. Give me that in Jeremiah 5 and 25 real quick. Watch this. Let me see something. No, no, 15. Jeremiah 5 verse 15. 15. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 15. Come on. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far. Uh -huh. O house of Israel. You see that thing? The Lord. He says, I'm going to bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel. Go ahead. It is a mighty nation. Mm -hmm. It is an ancient nation. Come on. A nation whose language thou knowest not. Really? Neither understandest what they say. Because the Babylonians, they were speaking what? They were speaking their Kushite language. You understand? We were not speaking that. We were speaking Hebrew. But the language that they spoke is it wasn't the language that we spoke. Because we used we use this verse, because you can read about this in Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. Moses talked about it. We use that in Deuteronomy 28, 49 to talk about Esau, but it also it actually first and foremost it goes into Babylon. And then in these last days, it goes into the daughter of Babylon. Read that again, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. No. I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou, thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Neither understandest what they say. So go back to Lamentation, chapter 2. Lamentation, chapter, no, Jeremiah 14, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 3. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits mm -hmm. and found no water. Because there was a siege. There was a siege in Jerusalem. Come on. They returned with their vessels empty. Mm -hmm. They were ashamed and confounded and covered and covered their heads. And covered their heads because we was moaning. That's why the Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentation. He says it's going to increase in Judah, moaning and lamentation. We covered our head. It was what we was moaning. We were we, had, we were lamenting. Go ahead, verse four. Because the ground is chapped. The ground is what? Because the ground is chapped. Because there was a siege. They had to. They were starving us. Go ahead. For there was no rain in the earth. You see that thing? There was no rain. The whole time he made sure because there was a siege. There was no water coming in and out, and the most high God did not give blessings of rain. Come on. The plowmen were ashamed. Mm -hmm. They covered their heads. You see that thing? They covered their heads because we were, we were catching hell because of our wickedness. That's when the Lord became our enemy. Go back to Lamentations now. Okay, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 5. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 5. The Lord was an enemy. Mm -hmm. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all her palaces. He had destroyed his, his strongholds and had increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Mourning and lamentation. Now go back to Romans now, chapter 5. Verse 10 again. Romans chapter 5 verse 10. For if, when we were enemies... When we were enemies, we were, that's what I, what I was showing you with Babylon, we became God's enemy. That's when that's why the Lord sent Nebuchadnezzar against us. Read on. When we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were what? Much more. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were reconciled to the most High God. By the through the death of Christ, we was reconciled to the Most High God through the death of Christ. 
Watch this. Give me Ezekiel 45 and 17. Ezekiel chapter 45 and 17. We was reconciled to the most high God by the death of his son. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 45 and 17. Come on. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons mm -hmm. and in the Sabbaths. In all solemn son solemnities, solemnities, meaning high holiday. Go ahead. In all solemnities of the house of Israel, hey. he shall prepare the sin offering uh -huh. and the meat offering. The sin offering and the, the meat offering, come on. And the burnt offering. And the burnt offering, hey. and the peace offerings. Peace offerings, come on. To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. To do what? To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So what Christ did, the meat offering, the sin offering, the burnt offering, the peace offering, when Christ died, he, did, he became that ultimate sacrifice. He became that ultimate offering to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Go back to Romans now, chapter 5 and 10. Romans chapter 5 is 10. Come on. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were reconciled. When Christ died, he reconciled us back to the Father. Eh? Much more, be, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We were saved by his life. Read on. And not only so, mm -hmm. but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. By whom we have now received the atonement. By, by whom we have now received the what? By whom we have now received the atonement. Remember, Christ was what? Christ was that lamb without blemish. The same lamb, which is the same ram that was without blemish for the priest to be able to do what? To, to bring atonement for the brother that trespassed so that his sins may be forgiven. So all that we read in Leviticus 6, verse 6 to, to 7, okay, is what we are reading here in Romans 5 and 10 and 11. Read verse 11 again. Romans chapter 5, verse 11. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. By whom we have now received the sacrifice. That's the atonement. By whom we have now received the sacrifice. Now go back to Leviticus now, chapter 6. Leviticus 6, verse 7 and verse 6. Leviticus 6 and 6 and 7 together. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. You see that thing? So that lamb, that lamb without blemish is making reference to what? Is making reference to Christ. Right? And the priest shall make an atonement for him mm -hmm. before the Lord. Right? And it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he hath done in trespassing therein. So now when it says by whom we have now received the atonement, the atonement that was done for this brother or the sister during this time is the same atonement that Christ did for all Israel to reconcile us back to the Father. Okay, come on, verse 8. And the Lord speaking to Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. Come on. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Now read verse 9 one again, once again. Read it slow for me. Leviticus 6 verse 9. Command Aaron and his son, say, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. So now, remember now, this is going into the burnt offering that was done, the burnt offering. So you see that part when it says, 
because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burned in it. This is the altar of the of burnt sacrifice. Jump down to verse 13. We coming back here. Leviticus 6, verse 13. Well, I want to talk about this burnt offering, the fire. Read verse 13 now. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Shall be what? Shall ever be burning upon the altar. So the fire must go past me what? Must continually be burning upon the altar. Read. It shall never go out. It shall what? It shall never go out. So this fire that was burning upon the altar of burnt offering, it what? The command was, it must never go out. It must burn on the altar. It must never go out. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 4. Okay? You know, before we get there, hmm. watch this. Give me Exodus 35 real quick. Exodus chapter 35. Exodus 35 and verse Start at verse 3. You know what? Start at verse 2. Exodus 35 verse 2. Exodus 35 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day. Come on. A Sabbath of rest unto the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Whosoever doeth work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. That was the law. Because we was under the law of animal sacrifice. You know? Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. You see, that's the law. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. No fire must be kindled on the Sabbath day. Watch this. Give me the book. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 12 now. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Let's, let's read verse 5. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Read. Or have ye not read in the law? In the what? How? In the law. In the law. So Christ, Christ was about the law. When Christ was walking the earth, he taught the people the laws of God. Read that part again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Uh -huh. Or have ye not read in the law? Have you not read in the law? Come on. How that on the seventh days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Read that part again. The priests do what? The priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. So the priest, so he's saying, have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath? So the priest was profaning the Sabbath, but he says what? But and are blameless. Give me Luke 1 and 6. We're coming back. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God. They were what? Walking. They were both righteous before God. Come on. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Blameless. So they were righteous before God because what did they do? They were walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. That's what made them blameless. So go back to Matthew 12, verse 5. So what is Christ talking about now? That's why the sons and Pharisees could not understand what he was saying. Matthew 12, verse 5 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? So how could they be profane? They are profaning the Sabbath, but Christ says, yet they were blameless. So what that means? What that means? What that means? Keep reading, verse 7. Verse 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Read that part again. Not... Hold on, hold on. Read verse 6. Read verse 6. Matthew chapter 12, verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Now that's a heavy verse right there. That's a heavy verse right there. Read that again, verse 6. Matthew chapter 12, verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. So when he says in this place is one greater than the temple. So what was Christ saying? What was Christ saying? He's going to explain it in the next verse. Okay, let me simplify it. Verse 7. 
Watch this. Verse 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, mm -hmm. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would have not condemned the guiltless. You see, so he says, but if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. But so, guess what? What was Christ saying? He was letting them know. Guess what? The old covenant of animal sacrifice now is going to be none and void. Now that I'm here. You better forget about that thing. It's going to be null and void. But the verse 5 is where they got confused because he said they profaned the Sabbath, but they were still blameless. Okay? We and we read the law in Exodus 35 verse 3. You shall kindle no fire in your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Yeah, that's the law. But he says, yet they were found blameless when they were doing. Hmm. Verse 7 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I would have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would have not condemned the guiltless. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. In Hosea 6, verse 6. There's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. Not right now, but later on towards the end of the class. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. Ready? For I desired mercy I do what? and not sacrifice. I desired mercy uh -huh. and not sacrifice. He says, for I desired mercy and not sacrifice. I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Go ahead. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice uh -huh. and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. More than what? More than burnt offerings. He says what? You see what he said right there? He says, I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Meaning what? The sacrifice was what was a shadow of things to come. That's why it says, I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Because guess what? The law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of things to come, was a shadow of Christ. That's why it says, for I desired mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And guess what we are reading about? Burnt offerings. That's what we are reading in Leviticus 6. And Christ is saying, he didn't desire the sacrifices, but mercy and the knowledge of God more than Ben offering. You see that thing right there? Watch this. Give me the book of John, chapter 1, verse 17. John, chapter 1, verse 17. Come on. For the law was given by Moses. The what? For the law was given by Moses. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses, the law of animal sacrifice. Come on. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see that thing? But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace means mercy. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So when it says, for I will have mercy and not sacrifice, or I desire mercy and not sacrifice, Yes, because grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But the law came by Moses, the law of animal sacrifice, which was a shadow of things to come, a shadow of Christ. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 21. Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 21. Read. Really? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. You see what he's saying? He says, I don't want the sacrifice. I don't want these burnt sacrifices that he was doing. Eat the flesh of those sacrifices. Don't give them to me. I don't want them. He's going to tell you what he wants. Next verse. Verse 22. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Concerning burnt offerings and all sacrifices. You see that thing concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. It says it wasn't really, it wasn't about that. It was never about that. It was about what? Next verse. But this thing I commanded I did mm -hmm. say, obey my voice. Do what? Obey my voice. Obey my voice. Come on. And I will be your God. That's what the Lord wanted from the get-go, from the beginning, from the time of Adam. You understand? The reason why, watch this, give me, Gen give me Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, verse 21. 
Because after Adam and Eve had sinned, this is what the Lord introduced unto Adam and Eve. Genesis 3, verse 21. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coat of skins and clothe them. You see that thing? He made coat of skins and he clothed them. That's when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced because of their sin. But the Lord gave them what? The commandment. Adam keep the commandment. Adam was given the breath of life. He did not keep that. So to cover them, you understand, what did the Lord do? He introduced animal sacrifice. But from the beginning, it was not so. The Lord desired what? The knowledge rather than sacrifices. Let's go back. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25 again. You know what started? No, Jeremiah 7, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. Read. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, mm -hmm. and I will be your God. Read. And ye shall be my people. Come on. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with, that it may be well unto you. You see, that's what the Lord wanted from the beginning. From the jump, this is what the Lord wanted. Next verse. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, mm -hmm. but walk in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart. Come on. And went backward and not forward. You see that thing? But we rejected the laws of God. That was it. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear but walk in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart. That's what we done did. That's why we ended up in slavery, like you see us this day. Come on. Verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Unto what? I have, unto this day. So we've been rebellious from the time we left Egypt. Unto this very day. Unto this day, 2021 so called. And to this day. Next verse. Go ahead. And to this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, uh -huh. daily, rising up early and sending them. Wait. Yet they hearken not unto me, mm -hmm. nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did what? But hardened their neck. What stiffness? Was stubborn and rebellious. Come on. They did worse than their fathers. We were doing worse than our forefathers. Imagine if Abraham was to show up and look at the state and conditions that we we was we are in right now. He is not going to believe what he's saying. You really have to imagine that thing. Our foremothers coming back and like, what the hell is that? Okay, because the state that we're in, we have fallen far from what we once were. Understand that thing? Okay. Watch this. Go back to Matthew 12. I'm going to go back there now. Go back to Matthew 12. Read verse 5. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Read. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? You see, they are, they are blameless. How did they profane the Sabbath? You remember, we are going up, but we are going into what? Bent offerings. That's what we are dealing with now. Bent offerings in Leviticus 6, verse 9. Bent offerings. Read the part again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? So this is how they, be, they were blameless. They profane the Sabbath, but they still remain blameless. Why? Go to Exodus 35, verse 3. Let's go there first. Exodus 35, verse 3. Wait. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. You shall what? Ye shall kindle no fire mm -hmm. throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. You shall kindle no fire. This is the law. This is the commandment. But Christ is telling the scribes and Pharisees, he says, the priests on the Sabbath, they profane the Sabbath, and they were blameless. Now give me numbers now. Give me number 28. Let's start at verse 1. Let's see why they were blameless. Because they were profaning the Sabbath, but they were blameless. Why? Number 28, verse 1. We're going to start this. 
Numbers chapter 28, verse 1. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, right. My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire. Made by for what? Sweet, and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire. For my sacrifices made by fire. Come on. For a sweet savor unto me. Mm -hmm. Shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. Read on. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. You see that thing? For day, hold on. Day by day. Two lambs of the first year without spot, meaning without blemish. Just like Christ was. You see that thing? Christ was that, what was that sacrifice that was without blemish. Go ahead. Two lambs of the first year without spots day by day mm -hmm. for a continual burnt offering for a what for a what for a what read that part last part of that verse for a continual burnt offering for a continual continual meaning what hold this let's go to Leviticus okay chapter 7 I mean chapter 6 verse 13 Leviticus 6 verse 13 I don't want us to lose that thought Leviticus 6, verse 13. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Shall be what? The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. That's the law. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Come on. It shall never go out. It shall never go out. Go back to where it was at now. Numbers 28, verse 3. Numbers 28, verse 3. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 28, verses 3. Come on. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year, without spot day by day, for a continual burnt offering. For a continual burnt offering. So these offerings were done daily. On a daily basis, these offerings, these burnt offerings were administered. Jump down to the six now. Watch this. The book of the, the book of Numbers, chapter 8, verse 6. It is a continual burnt offering. It is a what? Continual burnt offering. It is a continual burnt offering. Come on. It is a continual burnt offering which was ordained in Mount Sinai mm -hmm. for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. You see that thing? It says it's a continual burnt offering. Burnt offering. Burnt offering. Okay, continual. That's why in Leviticus 6 verse 18 it says this fire must never go out because it's a continual burnt offering for a sweet savor. A sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. Jump down to verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, on the what? Lamb. On the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. That's why Christ said, on the Sabbath day, the priests profaned the Sabbath and they found blameless because this was a law. The priests had to do this on a daily basis. There was burnt offerings on a daily basis, including the Sabbath day. That's why there was found blameless. Read that part again, verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot. Without what? Spot. Without blemish. Go ahead. And two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering. Come on. Mingled with oil uh -huh. and the drink. Really? This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. Of what? This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. It says this is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. The burnt every Sabbath, that's what they were, that was, that is what was going down. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. Go ahead. Beside 
the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. You see that thing? Go back to Matthew 12, verse 5 now. Matthew 12, verse 5. Because we need to understand this offering that was made became what? Became that atonement that Christ made in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 11. Okay? Matthew 12, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 5. Come on. Oh, have ye not read in the law? How? That on the Sabbath days, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? And are blameless. They profane the Sabbath and they are found blameless. Why? Because that was the law. Because when the priests were doing their sacrifices, they were not doing the, the burnt offering on the Sabbath. They were not eating of the, they were not eating the sacrifices. They were putting, they were taking the sacrifices and putting them upon the altar of burnt offering. For a sweet savor unto the Lord. They were not eating them. They were putting them, they were sacrificing them. That is what was that is what was done on the Sabbath in every other day, because it says day by day. Okay, watch this. Go back to Leviticus 6. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 9 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6. Verses 9, command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night. All night, go ahead. Including the Sabbath, go ahead. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. The fire, they said, the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Meaning what? All night, all morning, every day, there must be that's how it must be done. Go ahead. And the priest shall put on his linen garment. Shall what? Put on his linen garment. The priest, now this, because remember, the priest was given specific garments to wear. You know, and all Israel, but the priest, there were special garments that the priest wore that you knew those were the high priests. You know, and his linen preachers. Shall he put upon his flesh? And linen breeches, seemingly they will pass. His linen breeches, you can read about that in Exodus 28 and 42. Come on. And take up the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. Read that again, verse 10. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 10. And the priest shall put on his linen garment. And his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. So he would take, he would take the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar. Okay, watch this, keep going. And he shall put off his garments. He shall what? Put off his garments. So the priest will put off his garments, read on. And put on other garments. And put on other garments, come on. And carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. So the priest will put off his garments and put on other garments and take the flesh that he put beside the altar and carry the ashes without the camp Unto a clean place. I want to pause right there. Just for a second. I want to pause right there. It says he would carry the ashes without the camp. He would put off his garments and put on other garments. And carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 27 verse 29. Matthew 27 verse 29. Let's start there. You know what? Give me Romans 7 verse 14 so we don't lose the thought. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. So we don't lose the thought. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. Read again. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. 
Matthew chapter 27 to 29. The book of Matthew chapter 27 verses 29. Mm -hmm. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. So this is when Christ was mocked before he was put on the cross. Come on. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Come on. And after that, they had mocked him. Hey. They, they took the robe off from him. Come and on. Put his, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. They led Christ away to crucify him. They led him away to crucify him. Read verse 31 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 31. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and laid him away to crucify him. So now when they laid him away to crucify him, that's when the priest took the ashes of the burnt offering, okay, without the camp unto a clean place. That sacrifice that was that the priest had to do. To take the ashes unto what? Without the camp, any outside of the camp, to unto a clean place. That's symbolic of when they took Christ, you understand, and led him away to crucify him without the camp. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by the name. Come on. By name. Him they compelled to pay his cross. Really? And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. That's the place without the camp. That's the clean place he's talking about. You see that thing? It says, go back to Leviticus 6, verse 11 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 11. Okay. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. So when it says without the camp, that's when they carry Christ away to crucify him. That place is called the place of a skull, Golgotha. Okay, go back to Matthew 27. Let's 33 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 27. Verses 33. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. A place of a skull. Verse 35. And they crucified him. They did what? And they crucified him. And they crucified him. So when the priest was doing, was doing that, taking the ashes of the burnt sacrifices without the camp unto a clean place, that's the same thing that the Romans did. When they took away Christ, they took Christ away to crucify him at a place called the scar. Okay, watch this. Give me Hebrews 13, verse 10. The priest was the what the everything that the priest was doing with the burnt offerings and all that, rams without blemish. You understand? Ram lambs without spot, it was all symbolic of Christ. That's the spiritual understanding. That's what we're reading now in Matthew. Hebrews 13, verse 10. See what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 10. Come on. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Read that part again, verse 10. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 10. We have an altar. Wherefore, they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. He says they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. The tabernacle is made is symbolic of what? The old covenant. Because there are those of our forefathers that were saving the old covenant of animal sacrifice. The scribes and Pharisees were doing that. That's why the apostle Paul is to come back and say, give me Colossians. Okay. This is a scripture that is famous in the church. 
the book of Colossians chapter 2. Hmm. Colossians chapter 2, read verse 17. Start at verse, verse 14. Colossians 2, 14, let's start there and read down. The book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The ordinances that was against us was the law of animal sacrifice. Come on. Which was contrary to us. Uh -huh. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You see that thing? Because that's when the, 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 the law of animal sacrifices was going to be nullified. Go ahead. And having spoiled principalities and powers. The principalities and powers was the scribes and Pharisees. Read on. He made a show of them openly. Come on. Triumphing over them in it. How did he triumph over them in it when he resurrected from the dead on the third day? Read. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Uh -huh. You see that thing? Let no man therefore judge you in meat. The apostle Paul was writing to the church in Colossae telling them, listen, don't let no man, the man is making reference to the scribes and Pharisees, which was the principalities and powers. They sat in Moses' seat. That is what they were doing. They were judging the people in meat, meaning what? They were still requiring the people to bring meat offerings. Go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Uh -huh. Or in drink. Drink offerings, come on. Or in respect of an holy day. Hi, holy days, read on. Oh, of the new moon. Uh -huh. Oh, the oh, of the Sabbath days. Because what were we doing? We were sacrifices on the, we were doing sacrifices on these days. So they were still requiring the people to do it even after Christ did what? Even after, after Christ resurrected. They were still doing it. They were still requiring the people to do it. That's why during the time of the apostle Paul, because Christ was gone already, they were still doing that thing. They were still pushing that, okay? Which it was, they can't, let me not get into that. But they were still pushing that. That's why the Apostle Paul was saying what he was saying, right? Yes, yeah. okay? Watch this. Go back, go back to Hebrews chapter 13, 13 verse 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 10. Come on. We have an altar. Whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Meaning what? They were still serving the old covenant. That's what we read in Colossians 2, verse 14 to 16. Come on. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. For what? Are whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin for the sin offering you see that part for the bodies of those beasts because the animals that to be brought for sacrifices that's the beast is talking about you understand whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for the sin offering because the blood of the animal had to be spilled for somebody to receive the atonement now at this point the blood of christ was spilled for all israel to receive the atonement according to romans 5 verse 11. come on for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Are uh, what? Burned without the camp. The Apostle Paul is explaining the same thing that we were reading, that, that, um, that we were reading in Matthew 27. He's explaining, he's making it plain. It's not really plain, but that's what he's explaining right here. This is not plain. He's explaining it right here. You understand? It says, are burned without the camp. That was symbolic of what? Christ being led away, you understand, to be crucified in the place called the scar. Read. Wherefore, yes. Jesus also. Jesus what? Wherefore, Jesus also. Meaning Christ also, the same way that the high priest was doing to saving the, the tabernacle, Christ also. Come on. That he might sanctify the people with his own blood. The same way the, the blood, hold on, the same way the blood of the beast was used to sanctify the people, Christ's blood was used to sanctify the people. Come on. 
that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Uh -huh. Suffered without the gate. He did what? Suffered without the gate. What is that place called Golgotha? Go back to Matthew 27, verse 33 now, again. You see, Christ suffered without the gate, the place called the scar. Matthew 27, verse 33 again, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 3. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. A place of a skull, that's without the gate, without the camp. Same thing, okay? Go back to Hebrews now, chapter 13, verse 12. One more again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Come on. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. You see what is now he's commanding the people. He said, listen, let us go forth. God, he says, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. You see that thing? Without the camp meaning what? Leave behind the old covenant and come into the new through Christ. That's what he's saying to them. He says, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, without saving the tabernacle, the old covenant, bearing his reproach. Read on, verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, uh -huh. but we seek one to come. So when he says, for here, because here we have no continuing city, what is, the, what is he talking about, no continuing city? He's talking about just the same way. Christ was carried without the camp, okay? We also must put away the old covenant of animal sacrifices. That's what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 14. The book of Hebrews 13, verse 14. For we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We seek one to come, meaning what? The, the, the new covenant under Christ. So he said, let go of the old covenant. And in, and in with the new. You understand? Out with the old, in with the new. That's what the Apostle Paul, because remember, these writing to the Hebrews, don't get it twisted. These were the doctors of the law. Understand that? The Hebrews, listen, the Hebrews were the doctors of, they understood. The Apostle Paul wasn't writing to some strong dick and head. Mm -mm. He was writing to the men that knew the law. That's why the 13 chapters dedicated to them, because he needed to contour us. To, to bring, to give them the sense of why the, 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 the law of animal sacrifice had to be done away with. 13 chapters was dedicated to them to understand what is done away and what is ushered in. That's why he, he was breaking it down for them right here. Okay, Hebrews 13 verse 14 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 14. Right. For here, we have no continuing city, uh -huh. but we seek one to come. We seek one to come. Meaning Peter will put away the sacrifices. Watch this. Go back. Go back to um, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 11. Something I want to touch on now. Now that we explain that part, let's go back to Leviticus 6, verse 11. The book of Leviticus chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. Now remember, this is talking about who? The priest, Aaron and his son. He's talking about Aaron and his son. Read that again, verse 11. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 11. And he shall put off his garments mm -hmm. and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. So the high priest will put on his garments and put on other garments. Give me Matthew 27, 27 now. Matthew 27, verse 27. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 27. Uh -huh. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall uh -huh. and gathered unto him 
the whole band of soldiers. They gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers because to torture him. Watch what they do next. Next verse. And they stripped him. What did they do? And they stripped him. And they stripped him. They took off his garment. Eh? And put on him a scarlet robe. They put on, they put on him a Roman toga. A Greek toga. That's what they put on him. Go back to Leviticus 6 verse 11 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 6 verse 11. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments. Uh -huh. The other garment is the, the, the scarlet robe that they put on him. Go ahead. And carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Everything that is done that we read in the law, don't think it has no significance. If everything is profitable for doctors. Understand that. Okay, watch this. Uh, go back, uh, keep reading. Leviticus 6, verse 12 now. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. In it, the it is the altar of burnt offering. Come on. It shall not be put out. It shall not be put out, please. And the priest shall burn wood on it mm -hmm. every morning. Come on. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. They will lay the burnt offerings in order upon the altar of burnt offerings. Read on. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. The what? And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Watch this. Hmm. Something just popped into my head. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Give me Sirach, chapter 47, read verse 1. You know what? Give me Romans 1 and 3. Romans 1. You know what? No, no, don't give me that. First, give me Sirach 47, verse 1. Let's start there. Okay. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 1. Come on. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of David. In the what? In the time of David. This is during the time of King David now. Come on. As is the fat taken away from the peace offering. From the what? From the peace offering. So it says, as is the fat taken away from the peace offering. Go ahead. So was David chosen out of the children of Israel. You see that thing? Guess what? Yes, David and goes into Solomon, which goes into Christ. Romans 1 and 3 now. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. His son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come on. Which was made of the seed of David, which was what according to the flesh, which was what, which was made, which was made uh -huh. of the seed of David, with the seed of David, the seed according of, to hold the, on. Flesh. the seed of David, the seed of David, meaning will come to the same lineage. So the thing that was going on during the time of you know King David, King Solomon, and so on, it was were, it was all symbolic of Christ. All of it. That's why it says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Leviticus 6. Leviticus 6, verse 12 again. The book of Leviticus, verse 12. Okay. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning come on and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings you see that thing he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering the same way the fat was taken out of the what the peace offering just like the same way david that's how david was chosen to become king after him king solomon after him 
down the line to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah. Go ahead. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Mm -hmm. It shall never go out. It shall never go out. That's what we read in Matthew 12, verse 5. The, uh, Numbers 28, verse 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 9, 9 and 10. We can read about, we can, we can connect the precepts again. It's still going into the same thing. Next verse, verse 14 now. Watch this. This is, this is the meat offering. And this is the law of the meat offering. Come on. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. So the meat offering, the meat offering. The meat offering does not talk about actual meat, like flesh, meaning what? Of elf livestock. It's not going into that. Okay, read that again, verse 14. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 14. And this is the law of the meat offering. Mm -hmm. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. Come on. And he shall take off it his handful of the flower of the meat offering. Of the what? Of the flower of the meat offering. So the meat offering goes into flour. Flour. Flour comes from what? Flour comes from seed. The reason why it's saying meat offering is about is written in Genesis 1. Give me that in Genesis 1 29. The reason why it's called meat offering, but it's making reference to flour, oil, frankincense, and so on, is written in Genesis 1, verse 29. Hey, what you got? The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. Come on. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Uh -huh which is upon the face of all the earth Come on. and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for meat. You see where he's making, he's, he's, he's referring to the, the earth, you understand? He says the earth bearing seed, which is upon the face of, the, of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. So flower comes from wheat, which is what? You have to plant seed. You must plant seed. So the meat of the of the meat, when it goes into meat, the meat of the of the of the wheat, what is that? Because when you turn that wheat into flour, you what do you do? That's the meat of the flour, that's the meat. Then you turn into you, you mix it up, it becomes the dough. That's the meat. That is the meat right there. Okay. Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praise. All praise to the most high. Um, let's go back. So the meat, let me let me repeat it again. Let me explain it again. When it says for you it shall be for meat, this is going because at this point everybody had a vegetarian diet. Everyone, not a vegetarian diet, but a vegan diet. Everyone had a vegan diet. So what we are reading here is it says um Every earth bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, because they're coming from the ground, they grow. So in order for a for wheat plant to come up, seed must be planted. You understand? And when you do wheat harvest, you create flour. And when you create the flour, guess what? That goes into the meat. Then you mix it up, it becomes a dough. That's the meat. Okay? The same way you have a banana, you have an orange. What's inside the peel, that's the meat. That's what he's talking about. That's why it's called a meat offering. But he's not talking about the actual, like a goat, like a fish. No, he's not talking about that. Okay? Go back to Leviticus 6, verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And he shall take off it his handful of the flour of the meat offering and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it unto the Lord. You see that thing? So that's the meat offering, the seed. You understand? The grain, the fruit, and so forth. Go ahead. And the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat with Unleavened bread shall it be eaten in the holy place. 
in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall eat it. Shall they, they shall eat it. So this is going into what? This is going into um, what the priests, the sons of Aaron would eat, what is remaining of all from what? The, the, the meat offerings that they would do upon the altar. That's what this is going into. Come on. It shall not be bacon with leaven. I have given it unto them for their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, as is the sin offering and as the trespass offering. Come on, read on. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your congregations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. So now it says, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. Because this was the most, well, was the most holy sacrifices that was what required by the priest. Watch this, you know, verse 19. And the you know, Lord speaks. Hold on, hold on. Give me one second. Read verse 18 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 18. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. So now, you see that part when it says, it shall be for a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Because when Christ died, that was what the offering made by fire. When we receive the atonement, meaning the sacrifice made by fire. Watch this. So the offering made by fire, which is supposed to be forever throughout our generation. Guess what? Give me Romans chapter 8 now. Watch this. Romans chapter 8. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Romans chapter 8 and verse. You know what? Let's start at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, read verse 20. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Uh -huh. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So it says by the deeds of the law. What was the deeds of the law? We were just reading the deeds of the law. Those details that we were reading about what type of sacrifices you must bring, you understand and so forth. That's the deeds of the law. It says shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Because we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? He says, because by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law of sacrifice was always a reminder that we are in the midst of sin. Go ahead. Because it couldn't make us perfect. Give me that in, um, give me Galatians 5 and 1 real quick. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Really? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty uh -huh. wherewith Christ hath made us free. Christ is what? And be not entangled again. Wherewith Christ had made us free. Christ has made us free from the law of animal sacrifice or from the law of sin and death. Read. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What are you talking about? We must not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Because what he's saying here when he says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. We was, if we was always reminded because we didn't enter into the conscience. We were just doing it. Was, it, was, it was a mindless task that we was doing. Okay, watch this. Galatians, give me Acts. Acts chapter 15 verse 10. Acts chapter 15 verse 10. It says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Watch, watch what they were calling the law of animal sacrifice. Acts 15 verse 10. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 10. Read. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to obey? You see what they are calling it? A yoke. A yoke upon the neck. 
because they were our forefathers was unable to bear it, neither was the disciples able to bear it. That's why Christ had to do away, had to do away with that. We could not be able to bear it. You understand? Because to bring the end of the sacrifices, you needed money. You needed to have money to do stuff like that. You understand? Read on. Now that's it on that. That's it. That's it. I don't want to complicate it. Verse 10 is the, the 10 is the point. Read verse 10 again. Now therefore. Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to pay? Next verse, verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we shall be saved. You see even that thing? As they are. Yes, they were. It says, so the same way we, were, we, 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 we would be delivered through the grace of Christ, our forefathers also would be delivered through the grace of Christ. Because they, our forefathers could not bear the yoke of the old covenant of animal sacrifice, neither could we. So now that's why Christ had to come to give us a chance to get the kingdom to do away with the deeds of the law. Go back to Romans chapter 3, verse 20 again. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, they shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Uh -huh. Or by the law, is the knowledge of sin. Read on, verse 21. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. You see that thing? But now, the righteousness of God without the law. What is the righteousness of God that was manifested unto us? Give me that in John chapter 1. John 1, verse 29. The righteousness of God without the law. Read that, John 1, 29. It, watch this. The book of John, chapter 1, verses 29. Come on. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see that thing? That's the righteousness of God without the law was manifested unto us. Jump down to verse 31. And I knew him not, uh -huh. but that he should be made manifest you see to that thing? Israel. He should be made manifest to Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? Go back to Romans 3, verse 21. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Come on. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. That's talking about Christ. So the righteousness of God without the law is talking about Christ. Read. Right? Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Because you can read about that in the law. You can read about that in the prophets. That's why it says being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Okay. Read. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. We see that unto thing? all. Indeed, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So our righteousness is through faith in Christ. It's no longer through faith in that animal that we had to pray that needed to be sacrificed. Okay, now our righteousness is through the, right, the, the sacrifice that Christ would make to bring us closer to the Father. Come on. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, uh -huh. for there is no difference. There is no difference, meaning what? There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Guess what? There's no difference between Jew, Jews and Gentiles. Because that was the discussion here. Okay, jump back to verse 19 to understand who that's making reference to. Read verse 19. The book of, the book of Romans 3 verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, uh -huh. it saith to them who are under the law. You see that thing? He says whatever the law says, it says to them, is meaning what? It pertains to them that are under the law. Who's under the law? Who was given the law? The, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's very plain who the discussion is about here. It's about northern kingdom, southern kingdom. That's what the discussion was about. You see that thing? Watch this. Romans 8. Remember what, don't forget the point in, in Leviticus 6. Okay, 18, when it says, it shall be a statute forever. It shall be a statute forever. Why? Because even in our generation, we'll still be doing the meat offerings. But the meat offerings is what goes into the sacrifice that Christ made. 
now we keep the right the righteousness of God without the law was manifested, which was Christ. Now this is our part that we have to play now that Christ has done this thing. Watch this. Romans chapter 8 now. Romans 8 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see that part right there? Remember, go back to Romans 3. Okay, Romans chapter 3 verse 21. So we don't forget the thought. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Uh -huh. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So go back to Romans 8 verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see that part now? You see, the righteousness of God without the law was manifested to Israel, according to John 131. Okay? So now he's saying, now that Christ has done that, guess what? Now the righteousness of the law must be fulfilled in us now. That's why it says, you shall be a statue forever in all your generations. That's how it's going to be a statue forever. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Because we will now become what? That living sacrifice that we now, now we are that living sacrifice. To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Romans of 8, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Come on. Who walk not after the flesh, uh -huh. but the spirit but after the spirit who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit that's why he's saying what he's saying there go back to Leviticus 6 now Leviticus chapter 6 verse 18 the book of Leviticus chapter 6 verse 18 hold on hold oh. on wait 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 you know what hmm. let me see if I can touch on this thing give me you know that in first Peter give me first Peter 2 first Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 Read that. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verses 5. He also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. Come on. Hey, what? And holy priesthood. Remember, back then, the Levites were the high priests. Aaron and his sons, they were the high priests. Okay. But now Moses says something. Give me Exodus 19 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse, verse 6. 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. A what? A kingdom of priests. This is a prophecy now. You shall, you shall. Future prophecy. He's not talking. He's not talking to the Levites. He's talking to all Israel. You shall. Future. Come on. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests Wait. and an holy nation. Come on. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You see that thing? This is prophetic. So. Go back to First Peter 2, verse 5 now, again. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. He also, as lively stones, mm -hmm. are built up a spiritual house. A spiritual house, go ahead. And holy priesthood. Come on. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. To do what? Offer up spiritual sacrifices to offer up spiritual sacrifices what are those spiritual sacrifices sacrifices of righteousness we know what because remember it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us how is, how will it be fulfilled in us when we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh we offer sacrifices of righteousness like we read about earlier on maybe yesterday or last week in the book of psalms chapter 4 verse 5 to offer spiritual sacrifices, offer sacrifices of righteousness. That's why it says it shall be for it, is, it, it will be for a statute forever throughout, throughout your generation. 
That's what we read in Leviticus 6, verse 18. That's what the Apostle Peter is saying here. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That's what this is going into. Go back to Leviticus 6 now, verse 18. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verses 18. Wait. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Come on. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed. Come on. The tenth part of the ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual. Perpetual, meaning forever, come on. Half of it in the morning and half they off at night. Please, um, read out, keep reading. Come on. In a pan, it shall be made with oil. And when it is baking, no, no, there's thou, 20, there's 20, there's 20 again, there's 20 again. The book of Leviticus of 6 verse 20. This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, mm -hmm. which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed. Come on. The tenth part of the ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual. Come on. Half of it in the morning and half they off at night. Come on. In a pan, it shall be made with oil. And when it is bacon, thou shalt bring it in. And the bacon pieces of the meat offering shall thou offer for a sweet safer unto the Lord. Okay, read verse 21 one more again for me. The book of Leviticus of 6 verse 21. In a pan, it shall be made with oil. Mm -hmm. And when it is bacon, thou shalt bring it in. And the bacon pieces of the meat offering shall thou offer for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Read. And the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. So Aaron's sons will offer the stead. Come on. It is a statute forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. It shall be wholly burnt. So it's a statute forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. Come on. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Wait. Speak, un speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. Now read verse 25 once again. The book of Leviticus 6 verse 25. Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. This is the what? The law of the sin offering. Because Christ was that sin offering as well. Christ was that sin offering. This is the law of the sin offering. Come on. This is the law of the sin offering. Mm -hmm. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. It is what? It is most holy. It is most holy. It is a most holy sacrifice. It is a most holy offering. You see that part that there when it says it is most holy. Give me First Peter 2, verse 21. First Peter 2, verse 21. First Peter First 2, verse 21. Uh -huh. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Watch this. Um, before you get me there, before hold, hold first Peter 2 21, go back, go to first Peter 1. First Peter 1 verse 19. First Peter 1 verse 19. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. Mm -hmm. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the what? 
but with the precious blood of Christ. The most holy sacrifice, okay? The precious blood of Christ, come on. As of a lamb without blemish uh -huh. and without spot. You see that thing? He was a lamb without blemish and without spot. So go, go to 1 Peter 2.21 now. First to complete it the two verse 21. Come on. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Watch this. Watch this. Give me John 15, verse 10. John 15, verse 10. Leaving us an example that we should follow his footsteps. This is the example that Christ left behind. Okay? John 15, verse 10. Read that. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 10. Read. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. You see that thing? So the example that Christ left behind, he kept the commandments. He kept his father's commandments. We also must do the same. Keep the commandments as he commanded unto us. We must follow that footstep. You understand? He was a lamb without blemish and without spot. How are we going to become that lamb, that sacrificial lamb, without blemish and without spot? We must keep the commandments of the Most High God in the faith of His Son. Okay? Go back to First Peter 2, 3, 1 again. First Book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Okay? For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. We should follow his steps. Remember, Christ was that sin offering. Christ was the sin offering. He was that bent offering. Well, hold this. Give me that in um, give me Leviticus 9. Leviticus 9, verse 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 9. Verses 3. Mm -hmm. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid, take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering. For a what? For a sin offering. For a sin offering, come on. And a calf and a lamb. And a calf and a lamb. Read. Both of the first year. Mm -hmm. Without blemish for a burnt offering. So this sin offering was a burnt offering. This sin offering was a burnt offering. That's what we just read. Okay? Go back to 1 Peter 2.21. Again, once more again. So Christ became the sacrifice. He became the atonement. Okay? 1 Peter 2 verse 21. First book of Peter 2 verse 21. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Come on. Who did no sin? You see that part right there? Who did no sin? That's go back to Leviticus 6, so we don't lose the thought. Leviticus 6, verse 25. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 25. Speak unto, unto Aaron and his sons, saying, this is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. It is most holy. Most holy. How did Christ become that offering that was most holy? First Peter 2.22, again. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verses 22. Who did no sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. You see that thing? Neither was guile found in his mouth. That's why he was a sacrifice that was most holy. Come on. Who, when he was reviled, when he was reviled, reviled when he was reviled, he didn't return evil for evil. Is that again? First book of Peter 2, verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. He did not return evil for evil because we read in John 15, he kept the, the commandments of the Most High God, so that's the footsteps he left behind. We must do the same. Revile, revile not again. Come on. When he suffered, he threatened not. You see that thing? When he suffered, he threatened not. Come on. 
but committed himself to him that judges righteously. But he committed to the most high God that judges righteously. Okay, watch this. Go back, go back to Leviticus 6. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 25. Once more again. The book of Leviticus chapter 6, verses 25. Speak unto Aaron and, and unto his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. It is most holy. Go back to Romans now, chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, I don't want to complicate it even further. But I'm going to end the class right here. The reason why I brought this class out is because what I'm noticing is Brothers and sisters are, are reading. They are not studying. You are just reading. You are not studying. For you to be able to understand, to, to, to get to the level where you can understand what we just went over, and when you read, you can be able to connect the precepts based on what we went over. You need to study, not read the scripture. Just study. I don't know how many classes we, were, we have gone over about study, but brothers and sisters, you are still not, you are not studying. Okay, and you brothers, I told you brothers, I want to speak to the brothers after this action. I want to talk to you brothers, all right? Let's pray, pray. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This is to ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most our hand to that. All praise to the most high. All praise to the Lord.